All right, here it is, everybody's favourite, Division. Uh, Division, yeah, I'm not going to pretend it's easy to get your head around. Um, the word divide even has a mysterious sort of symbol, which in itself is, it's all right to fractions, it's really, it's like what number am I going to divide by what number, which is what fractions always is, but anyway. So it's about dividing or sharing, uh, same thing. There's really three contexts for division that I reckon are uh, really uh, worth uh, showing and working with. And that's with sharing. Yeah, yeah division's fantastic for sharing. Uh, look, it could be food, um, pizzas or a bar of chocolate or a um, can of something. You want to make sure it's even and in equal parts, uh, which is the whole point of, of sharing. Um, so all money, you're sharing up something. Um, so it needs to be done evenly. I think divisions is great for finding averages, average age of a group of people, average height, it's, uh, average score from uh, something in sport, like average is really appropriate use of division. And uh, I love the converting. So if we're saying, okay, uh, uh, what's uh, 56 days? Or, uh, well, that one works evenly, but we could have gone 66 days. And we have to work out, okay, six, 66 days, how many weeks is that? So, oh, okay, oh, man, I need to divide by seven. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if you're ever stru stuck in division, why not turn it around? Do the inverse. Multiplication is division. Division is multiplication. That's an inverse. All right, but let's have a look at it. Uh, the way it was traditionally taught, uh, let's take an example of the days one. Um, how many days in um, how many weeks, sorry, how many weeks in 120 days? So how many weeks in 120 days? So we need to convert, we need to divide by seven. And this is possibly the way that we were all taught. Uh, even at my age, I don't think much has changed. I still, I still think we're taught the same way. Seven into one doesn't go right. Uh, 7 into 12 goes once, and then it's 5 left over, so put a spell on that and shrink it. How many 7s in 50? Uh, I know one of my number facts is 7, lots of 7, because that makes a square number as well. Yeah, it makes one of those squares. So 7, lots of 7 is 49, so that's 7. It's nearly 50, and then we were told to put er 1, which is, yeah. Okay, uh, there's a day remaining, or um, I'd much rather see that as a fraction on um, one day on my way to another group of seven days on my way to another week. Anyway, that's the way we were uh, most likely to have been taught. Not great, no place value, because the first thing I think I'd point out is that's 100. So literally the first problem is 100, how many sevens? And you can do that, so to, to have been told, uh, can't do is actually mathematically incorrect. You can do. And the next one is actually 20 how many sevens, then zero how many sevens. And if I get an answer to all of those, all I have to do is add them up. But it's technical. So we end up with a shortcut and we paid the price with the uh, understanding. So I guess there's a couple of ways to do it. I think my favourite way, if you're going to stick with the place value of it all, is this. It's called long division, which has horrendous memories for a lot of us, but it's really... I try to think of it as long, but, for, but forgiving. Um, uh, what's an example? Uh, how, many, how many sevens? How many, well, we, we, well, we did seven before, so let's make, it, let's make something different. How many eights are there in... 777. How many eights are there in 777? Why you'd want to be doing that, I'm not too sure, but there might be a reason. You might be converting, might be an average. Uh, who knows? Could be sharing it. Uh, so, the first thing to do is you need to have a guess. How many sevens do you think there are in 777? But the important thing is make your guess end in a zero. And go for things that you already know. Looking at that, I'm already going, hold on, eight lots of 100. 
is 800 or 100 eighths is 800. So I wouldn't want to be picking a number that's 100 or more. So but I'm going to make my guess end at zero. Um, I've got a feeling I know something about 80 because 8 eighths is a square number and that makes 64. So this person's guessed 80. Well, let's have a look at how close it was. So essentially this means we're going to do this. So 80, 8, 80, lots of 8. 8, 8 to 64, so 8, 80 to 640. Now we need to subtract to see how close the guess was. It's a pretty good guess. So let's have a look. Um, what have we got? Uh, I'm go I think I'm going to add on to, to get my answer here. 60 more to 700 and then 77. So that's 137. So I didn't need to do any subtraction. I could have, but it, it looks to me like that's, uh, that's pretty straightforward. So it's 137. How many eights are there in 137? Just have a guess that ends in a zero. Don't push yourself, to go, oh man, that's too hard. Uh, you can go 10 eights here if you want to. Um, 20 might get you too many, so let's be safe. So we can go we can go 10 here. Good on 15 if you know how to multiply by 15, but whenever you multiply, whenever you choose a number that ends in zero, it makes the multiplication easier. So we've got 10 times eight, so we're gonna take away 80. So let's see how we go. Let's see how we go. Oh, I'm going to add on to find the difference there. That's 57. That's 57. Now, what do I know about 8 and 57? Okay. 8 eighths is 64. 6 eighths. 8 six is a 48. I sort of know that one. I might try another one. I think, I think I'm going to go uh, 6 eighths. I'm going to try 7 eighths because I reckon that's 56. So I'm now within range, I'll put my seven down, so over here becomes seven eights. I know I'm gonna take away 56, yes, I only got a difference of one here. So how many eights in one? I can't do that. So it's gonna be one on my way to another group of eight, and now I add these up, and I get to 97. So my answer here was 97 and one eight. And the key to it is, having your guesses end in a zero. Whoever saw this, that you could get nine lots of, uh, uh, or 90 lots of eight would be 720. Yeah, terrific, you cut out this step already, you've used your number facts well. But that's not always going to happen. That's why this could be long, but be forgiving. You could have gone 50, 50, uh, and a 30 or whatever to make that fit in. Uh, but it's a long but forgiving way of doing it, key. Have at least your first, but potentially your first two guesses end in a zero, and it keeps it place value. But there is a lot of work in it, as in there's uh, multiplication. There's division, obviously, at the start, but there's multiplication. There's subtraction, and at the end, you've got to do addition. So it's, it's a pretty involved method, but it's long, but it, it can be forgiving. Uh, the more accurate your first guess is, the shorter the division is, but, if your first guess isn't that good, it's not like you're out of it now. You're still a chance of getting in there and finding yourself the answer. Anyway, something to try for division. Um, and yeah, I think that is the best thing to do. If you can always think of division in perhaps those three contexts. And if you're really struggling, the whole problem can be put to round to multiplication where you're really going, uh, how many lots of eight are going to get me to 777? A little bit of a sort of algebra, so you then you go, oh well, yeah, well that's a hundred lots of eight, and all right, it's eight hundred. Already you're getting close, so place to start anyway. Have a go and see how you like it. Thanks very much.